Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a visually appealing collage in Word as advertised on the thumbnail. So the first thing you need to do is to import all of your images but first of all I'm just going to change the background of our page. I'm going to go to design and I'm going to go to page color I'm just going to select a light grey. Now the reason for this is because I'm going to put some white border lines around my images which I won't be able to see on a white page. Now just remember that just because I've changed the colour of this page it won't print out grey. If you like a visually appealing background I'm going to show you how to do that at the end that will print out. So I'm going to go to insert go to pictures, click on the drop down and select picture from file. I've got all of my pictures here so I'm just going to click and drag across all of my images and just click insert. Now when your images are inserting they'll blow up across several pages and if I just scroll out you'll see where all my images are. Now the way in which to be able to move and customize these images is to click on one of them, go to picture format go to wrap text and select in front of text. You'll then begin to see your photographs move but don't panic. What you need to do is just click and decrease the size of your images so that then we can see them all on one page at the end. So go ahead, click on the image, wrap text, in front of text, resize. And I'll just speed up the video to complete that action for all of them. Okay, so now you've reduced the size of all your images and you're able to move them around your page, you now need to decide exactly where you want your images to go. And in that, I mean not perfectly. I mean, for example, it's not always great to have two images together like this because they're very similar. It's quite good to split them up. If you've got similar images in colour like these two, again, ideal to split those up across your page. And then with these three here, you can either have them across the page from each other or diagonally, just once again to split those up. And just move them around your page. Obviously, these two are very similar in colour. And then you've got this one here sort of on its own, although you have got the sand and the horizon line as well. So again, you might want to move those around. So just have a play around and decide where you want to put them. So once you've roughly got them in place, we can begin to edit them and customize them all as a whole. So if I select one image, hold down my command or control key on my keyboard and click and select all of the images. Alternatively, you can go up to selection pane and you can click on all of your images by clicking on the top one, holding down the shift key, clicking on the bottom one. You can see now they've all been selected. So we can customize these now. If we go to format pane at the top here, if you can't see it, it's because you're not on the picture format tab and you haven't selected an image. When you select an image, this tab will appear. So now we can go to the bucket icon and I'm going to put a white border line around the outside of my images. So I'm going to click on the drop down and go to solid line. Then I'm going to go to color and then I'm going to click on the drop down and select white. You can see I've already selected it, but there's a multitude of colors that you can select from. And then in the width here, I'm going to put 10 points and press enter. And then down in the joint type here, you can see I've got just rounded edges on my images. You can keep that if you want, but I like to have mitre corners. So now they're nice and sharp. Then I'm going to go up to this icon here where I'm going to introduce a shadow to my images. I just think it looks nice as if they're lifted off the page. Click on the drop down, go to presets. I'm sorry you can't see all of my presets. They've gone off the edge of the page. But when you bring them up, you can see you've got a multitude of options. So let's choose this one here. And of course, you can play around with those shadows. You can make them bigger or smaller. You can move the blur. You can see the adjustments that's happening to my page to the left. It's completely up to you. So now we've customized all the images and we have them exactly how we want them. We can now start to change the sizes. So if we want this row of images here, we have to decide how far away from the edge of the page we want our image. You could choose a big margin like this, or you could choose a much smaller margin like this. 
it doesn't matter just roughly put the picture at the top where you want that margin roughly to the side as well and then do the same with the bottom so roughly that distance away from the bottom and from the side it doesn't have to be too accurate because we're going to sort that out in a second the next thing I'm going to do is select all of my images on this right hand side by holding down that command or control key go to a line then we're going to select a line to right don't worry they've all moved over a line and then distribute vertically now this will give you an equal distance between all the images but as you can see we really haven't got a gap at all so what we need to decide is which images we're either going to crop or we're going to make smaller now this image at the top here is quite big so I'm happy to reduce the size of this image but let's say for example you want this image to be a little bit bigger what we can do is just move this one up we can actually make this image the same size as the one below now if you find it's a little bit clunky to move your images you can see it's clicking then just hold down your alt key while you're moving it it will smooth out that action for you you can be a little bit more accurate so if we want these two here to be the same width then just click on the one at the bottom go up to here and you can see it's 7.5 so if we click on the one above you can see it's 7.54 we can just delete that four just click inside and delete it press enter and now you know that these two images are exactly the same width and that will work really well when we come to doing this giraffe image the next image up here I don't want to be the same size as this one because I just want to create a little bit more interest so I'm actually going to make this picture a little bit bigger and then this image I'm just going to make a little bit smaller now if you don't want to make the image smaller but you want to crop it so to make this more of a square image that's absolutely fine you just select it go to crop you can see these black markers around the outside of your image I'm going to just grab the bottom one and pull that image up or pull the line up then you can move the photo up and down or left and right depending on what you've cropped then just press enter and you can see your image is now cropped then I can just make that image a little bit bigger and just make sure that I've got my margins in mind at the top here and at the bottom then we can repeat the process by selecting all of the images go to a line a line to right a line distribute vertically so now we've got an equal distance between all of our images you can decide now whether that distance is too small or just right if it's too small once again you're going to have to make one of your images smaller we're going to have to crop it so let's say for example we made this one a tiny bit smaller select all four again go to a line and distribute vertically and that just means you'll have a greater gap between those images but again this is all personal choice so you get to decide so I'm going to scroll in now and do the top line and what we need to do is to make sure that all of these images are the same height so in order to do that we're going to have to make some decisions about which image we're happy to crop and which image we want to make smaller so with this image in the middle here we're going to have to crop it because in order to make it the same height we need to change the size of the width so select it go to picture format and go to crop again crop the image you can move the image inside so the dog remains in the middle of the image just press enter move it over and then you can resize it now you may decide that that image is far too big and doesn't give you a lot of option with this image here that's absolutely fine you can just go to crop again and we can just crop the image move the image to where we want it press enter and then we'll just extend that out a little bit just to make sure these two are the same height click on this image here you can see the height is 675 select it copy it command or control C on your keyboard then select this image select the height again and press command or control V to copy that number across press enter and now those two are exactly the same height now all you need to do is make sure the distance between these two photos is the same as this distance here 
So as you can see, we can move this over. We can do that with our arrow keys or we can just move it. Again, if it starts to click, then as you're moving it, hold down that Alt or Option key and then you can smooth that action out and just make sure that that image is roughly that distance away as it is here. Make sure they're lined up at the top so you can select them both holding down that Command or Control key. Go to Align, Align to Top and they're now perfectly lined up. So there's this image here, you can see we need this distance away. It's lined up to the top, then select it, go to the height. Now you should have saved your clipboard the original height of this one. Press the Command or Control and V, which has now pasted that number in. If you've forgotten what it is, just click on one of these two photographs and it will show you the height. And then just press Enter. And you can see this image now is the same height as these. Just move this one down. It's now the same height, but as you can see, the width is too wide. So what we can do is go to, is select it, crop it, and then we can crop it. Now this will crop the image and not the border around the image. So you can see we've now got this gap here. So it's going to show you this preview here. So you can see the gap is a bit wide. That gap there is roughly the same as this gap here. My image isn't quite right because the animal isn't in the center of my image. So I'm just going to move that over and then press enter. And now they're all the same height. We've got the same distance between them and they're lined up. So don't worry about the gap at the side here. We'll sort that out at the end. There's a bigger gap there. We'll align the whole thing. We go down to the second row and we'll do the same here. Select this image, roughly place it the same distance apart than the rest as the rest of the images. I'm just going to select both of them, go to align, align to top. So now they're perfectly lined up. Then I'm going to deselect them both and just go to picture format and we can see the height here, 6.02. I'm going to copy that number, select this image. Then I'm going to go back up here, select it and paste command and control V in the other number press enter. Now we can move this over right to the edge, trying to line it up with the edge of this image here. You can see we need this gap. So again, we're going to use the crop tool and then we're going to click and move it across. When I release it, you can see I've got this preview. That gap is not too bad. I think it needs to come back just a little bit. Then again, move the photo as you see fit. I'm just going to move it over, then press enter. And then as you can see, these two are lined up. They're the same height and we're lined up to the side as well. And then down here, we've got these two perfectly lined up. So we want to make sure that the giraffe is too. The difficulty with this one is we don't have the height of both of these images and the gap. So what we can do is line it up with the side here and then we can pull it up just to make sure we've got the right gap here. So you can see we're lined up here. We've got the gap here. Just going to use my arrow key to pull that down and if we're not perfectly lined up then I can move it, hold down my Alt or Option key to smooth out that action. You can see we've been cut off at the bottom. So let's go up to the crop tool and then we can just move this down, press enter, and then we can move this up and then we're going to continuously have to crop it until we're happy with the image. We can move the giraffe down press enter. Okay, now what we can do is line it back up again, line it up to the side, make sure the gap's okay, and then line it up to this image here. Now what we can do is to crop it, move this up so it's in line with the other image to the right. You can see that's now lined up across here. Then we can move the image of the giraffe up and down as we see fit then just press enter and now that's all lined up perfectly. So let's zoom out. Now you can see we've got everything lined up. What we can do is go to the selection pane. We can select everything in here, select the top one, hold down the shift key, select the bottom one. You can see that now we've selected everything. We can go to group, select group. Now it's all one group. We can go to align, align to the center of the page, align, aligned to the middle of the page. If you want to put a background on this image, if I just go to insert, 
shapes, click on the drop down and select the square, and then just click and drag out a rectangle across the page. Go to Shape Format, go over to Format Shape, go to the bucket icon, go to Fill and click on the drop down. If you want a solid fill colour, you can go across to here and you can select from a multitude of different colours. Alternatively, I like to use a gradient fill and here I'd like to go from linear and click radial. Then in the direction, if you go to the centre one, you can't see it's just off my page, go to the centre one of that five and it says from centre. Then you've got your colour options here. So this one over here is the centre colour, which is here. Let's just turn that white and you can see, just cl click on your colours, that white one's in the middle. Then click on this colour one here and then you can select from any colour choice you want. I'll select on the blue. And then once you're happy, go to send backwards, centre back. Now you can see how it looks on your images. Now if you're fortunate enough, you can go to the colour icon here, go down to more colours and you can select from this colour wheel if you want to select a particular colour, perhaps from your images. If you do select from the images, it just makes it a little bit more cohesive. You may also have this eyedropper tool, in which case you can click on that and you can move anywhere over these images and select a colour of your choice. So we could select a yellow colour if we wanted to and click OK. And we have alternative options where I've selected another colour from down here but also you can go down to the bottom here and you can change the brightness of it or the lightness and you can make those kind of alterations as well. I do rather like the blue which I've chosen from my images and again you can darken and lighten that as well. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has please like and subscribe and have a great day.